Hey y'all, welcome back to the Bench Racing Network. Um, been putting this project off for a little bit. So today we're gonna try and get the front suspension rebuilt on the Amazon here. Get new tie rods and center links on it. Um, and all new bushings in the front end. And maybe sort of throw an alignment on it. It is it is one week before Mountain Meet. Um, actually it's less than a week before Mountain Meet. It's one weekend before Mountain Meet. So I am not gonna have the time to uh, actually take this to a shop and get it aligned. Um, so we're just going to kind of do the best we can because uh, it's really not going to get driven that much. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's, uh, let's get it up in the air. Let's get to it. And first things first, the wheel has to come up. Actually, before that, this is the amount of play that we're starting. Right there. And this is actually, this is the good side. So that's how much slop there is. All right, so it has just occurred to me that um, what I really should do when I do this, it should involve taking the brake line off and ideally replacing it. Um, that's not gonna happen because I don't have it. Um, these brake lines actually look like they've been replaced at some point. Um, I mean, it's not beautiful, but it's not super horrible either. Um, however, the car runs and the brakes work. Uh, so I really don't want to mess with this right now. I don't have wheel cylinders. I don't have replacement lines. I don't have fittings if I were to strip those out. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the, the whole wheel hub and everything. With the ball joint here and then the four fasteners on the lower ball joint here. And then take that whole hub with the brake line still attached and just put it over here. I'll hang it or I'll support it on something. Um, and then that will allow me access to uh, remove the rest of the suspension here. I could probably get the line off without messing stuff up, but that bleeder there uh, doesn't really look like it would be able to be opened uh, without breaking off. And if I don't have a wheel cylinder, then the car is immobile. So yeah, uh, let's, so let's take that route. I, I'm not gonna replace the ball joints um, they don't have any any noticeable play in them. And also at some point in the very near future, this car is gonna get disc front end instead of drum. And those ball joints are different. So it didn't make sense to me to spend the money on um, the ball joints for the drum front end uh, when I'm gonna be putting discs on here. So that's why we're not messing with that. Anyway, back at it. All right, so I guess the first thing that I'm gonna do is support the lower control arm with the jack. Um, and then take the nut off of the top of the, uh, the shock here, and that should allow, then I can lower the jack and get the spring out, release the spring tension off of there. Um, I'll take this off of the sway bar at the same time, um, and then hopefully that'll, uh, that'll get the spring out, and then I can work on the ball joints. So let's try that. And I also do not have new shocks yet because I haven't decided the route that I'm going to go. So hopefully these can be reused. We'll put a little bit of a PB blaster on there to hopefully make that process a little bit smoother. Well, that's unfortunate. All right, so the problem here is this upper nut is seized to the thread shaft of the shock. If I can't get this off, then I can't get the lower nut off, which means I can't get the shock out of the way. Um, and the shock at the bottom is, uh, well, it's double nutted at the bottom. 
So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna leave this alone and we're gonna take it off at the bottom. All right, yeah, this is gonna be much easier. Uh, this is plan B. So we're gonna take these two nuts off of there, which I should be able to get off with an impact, I hope. And if not, I can actually grab onto the bottom tube here and keep it from spinning. Um, so yeah, those two nuts are gonna come off, which is then gonna allow this lower control arm to drop down and then the spring to come out. So I'm gonna try and set up and film this, but it may be a crappy angle. Yeah, you're gonna have to bear with me. I'm just laying the, the phone on the ground. The best we can do here, so, all right. We've got the wheel supported out here. There appears to be a 14, come on. All right, one came off, nice and easy. So that's actually one nice thing about doing this stuff via video is I've found that it forces me to talk through things and find other solutions instead of getting medieval up on that upper one. All right, so we're gonna let it down now. The shock should start to come out. Oh, the sway bar link's holding it, okay. All right, let me get the, I forgot about the sway bar link here. So let's get the sway bar link off. Apologies again for the crappy angle, but uh, you know, you get what you pay for here at Bench Racing Network. thing down again, seeing if we get any farther this time. Okay. Oh, I'm a moron. Of course, the hub is still, the bolts on the ball joints are still holding it together. Jesus. So the nuts on the upper ones here are 13s. I thought they were half inch for a minute. Um, but, uh, you know, old cars. Actually, they might be half inch. That six point half inch fits a bit better than the 6.13. So you know what, we're gonna try the 6.5 inch here. It looks like a standard, it looks like a standard bolt to me. Fairly coarse thread. So. All right, uh, let's do the other one. reusing some of this hardware, but uh, you know, here we are. Okay, so I'm gonna let this down now. Oh, damn, that grease fitting is not gonna come through the hole there, probably. Yeah, it's not. Right. Mm, well, I mean, it should. Um, yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, 
now everything's coming apart good. All right, so next up, I need to make a place to set this whole wheel hub here uh, when I take those lower ball joint bolts. Oh, and I guess to free it up, I also need to take this tie rod off here. So let's do that. So unfortunately, the jack is kind of harsh in my lab for space to get an impact on there. Oh, but it's not really even that tight. Cool. So we'll spin that off real quick. All right, so that nut is almost off of there. We'll give it a little bit. This actually would have been a bit easier with this bolt and all up here because now every time I hit this with a hammer, the whole wheel is moving. Um, so I don't really like using pickle forks because it tears up the parts. And this tie rod is actually not bad. It would be nice to save it as a spare, um, but they're not terribly expensive. So, all right, here we go. So the uh, hardware for the ball joints definitely does appear to be standard because the uh, the nuts for the lower ball joints, a uh, 14 millimeter will just barely not fit, but a 9 16 will. So I guess that's how we're doing it. Um, Sit there. Damn, I could have just taken the that bolt on. All right, whatever. All right, so now all this is free. Um, I should be able to, and that's a long spring. Still got weight on it. Um, all right. Getting this back together is going to be kind of a pain, especially with the sock, the sock kind of just chilling there, but uh, it'll be doable. So, all right, I guess now I need to, it looks like there's just a long cross bolt from the back of the arm to the front. So I guess that has to come out and given that there's still some, oh, really there's not, there's not enough spring pressure there to be worried about. All right. So I guess I'll try and get that bolt out now. And now we're gonna get this long bolt out. Normally I'd work from this side, the nut, but I'm lazy. Uh, this is a 7 8 or 22. Thank you. 
Well, I got in a hurry and didn't film putting the bushings in, but you can imagine how, you know, how it goes pressing out a bushing and pressing in a new one. Um, so, yeah. Alright, next thing to do is replace the bushings on the upper arm. Uh, there's one under this U-bolt and there's one under that U-bolt there. Um, the, the, the easier way, I think, to do this would be to take these two bolts out and then take the whole arm out and work on the bench. However, because I don't want to mess with the brake line, um, there's a tab there that would prevent me from taking the A-arm out without screwing around with the brake line. So we're just going to do this uh, in situ in the car the same way that uh, Dean did on his channel. So I'll take this nut off of there, that nut off of the back there, and then these four U-bolts off there, and that'll let me get to the bushings underneath there. So that taken apart, these caps and U-bolts right here. There's your U-bolt. Oh, it's not a cap, it's the whole arm. Duh. with our bushing here that now has to be smacked off of the uh, of that rod. Oh, or I can just take it off like so. Oh, I hope there's room at the steering box. Oh, look at that, just barely. Okay, here we go. Um, so I guess I gotta get bushings. This is a metal sleeve, so I gotta get the old bushing out of there times two. All right, so we will be right back. All right, and we're over at the vise. We should just kind of be able to like taco these and pop them out. Well, easier said than done, I guess. Let me work on one of these at a time so I get a good, good clamp on it here. Too much because I don't want to bend the bush or don't want to bend the holder. There it goes. I yeeted that one off into the abyss. Let's do the same thing with this one. Oop, there we go. So we got our new bushings here, and actually, yet again, look, a part that you can buy brand new from Volvo. Um, got these again from VP Auto Parts. I don't know if you're supposed to or not, um, but I can see rubber on metal just being really kind of squeaky. So I'm going to put a little bit of grease in here. It'll, it'll ease installation as well. Grease that up. And then we'll take our bushing and kind of smush that in. Come on now. There we go. And same thing, we'll put a little bit of grease on the rubber here, and I'll also put a little bit of grease on the uh, on the pivot point on the front suspension. So there's one. Let's do the other. I, I did Google this for about ten seconds before I started, and couldn't find an answer really. So we're just gonna go with. I'm gonna go with my gut and say that it takes a little bit of grease. All right, that's done. Let's move back over the car and get this reassembled. Thank you. 
right, so one thing you need to do when you're doing regular rubber bushings, because they're vulcanized both to the inner sleeve and the outer sleeve, you can't tighten the pivot bolt um, until the arm is up in position. Because if you do, if you tighten it here, then you have to force this arm up and you're just gonna rip the rubber away from the sleeves and then you'll have ruined a couple bushings. So I'm gonna leave this uh, snug but loose until I get the spring on there and get all the ball joints bolted back up and uh, then we'll come back and uh, tighten that up. So I got the tie rod off after a little bit of hammering. Um, these are directional. You can see, um, sort of, you might be able to tell. Focus, come on now. There we go. If you look at the ball joint to the tie rod, or the, the tie rod end to the tie rod rather there, it's basically straight. And if you flip it around, you can see that one has an angle on it. Uh, the angle should go, and this one was correct, the angle should go um, to the inside, um, to the uh, center link, the steering box. Uh, but yeah, and here's the replacement tie rod. Um, you can see right there, that's the angled side. And that one is a straight side. These are also marked for side. That one is stamped L right there. The old tie rod was actually stamped on the tie rod, not the tie rod end, but uh, this is stamped L, the other one I have is stamped R. So this is gonna be our driver's side. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and get this in and then start reassembling uh, the rest of the suspension here. That's one side done, as done as it's gonna get anyway for mountain meat. Um, obviously my double nut situation here is not great. Um, when I do decide what shocks I want on here and when I do the disc brake conversion, um, that's just gonna get cut off so I can get it out. Um, but it's fine for now. So new tie rod, new bushings. Um, the shocks are actually, I mean, they're soft, but they're okay, they're not leaking or anything. Um, new bushings on the sway bar ends here. I did forget, I've got new bushings here. Um, but I'll do those here in a minute. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna film the other side. It's gonna be exactly the same. Uh, but yeah, that's how I rebuilt the suspension, the front suspension on a 1963 Amazon. Obviously, the took some shortcuts, but uh, yeah, you know, you work with what you got. So we'll uh, finish putting them back together. Uh, we'll do the other side. Got a couple of the minor things to do, and then we're gonna be ready for mountain meat. Oh, man. So it just occurred to me that I didn't film anything about replacing the center link, but it's two 17 millimeter bolts, a couple of whacks and a hammer, unscrew the old ends, put the new ends in, put it back in the car, whatever. Um, so it is the Friday before Mountain Meet, and this year Mountain Meet is going to run from Tuesday to Sunday, so it's, it's a pretty big event. Um, we're going to have roughly 50-ish, 50 to 55, hopefully, um, Volvo enthusiasts coming in. And this is, it's a Volvo Meet. Like, it, it's a Volvo centric, you put it that way. It's it's not any particular generation or type of Volvo or anything. It's it's the Turbo Bricks Ford, uh, which has been around, I don't even know what year, before I started with the family last time. Um, I've been on the forum since, gosh, I don't know, 08 or so. Um, started posting, no, before that, 06 maybe. Um, really got involved and, and started posting a lot around the. Uh, 2010 or so, with my first SE around that time. Um, maybe that was, I think that was 2008, or whatever. I, I digress. Um, Turbo Bricks is a Volvo community, and it's uh, there's some really cool people involved in the Volvo community. A lot of really smart people too. Um, just the type of people that you want to hang out at the lodge with for, uh, for five days and no woods and no cell service and just talk about shit, be it life, cars, projects, whatever. Um, a lot of these people were like in my wedding. Um, I, I've known a lot of these people 10 plus years. They're, I always kind of joke and say it's, you know, 50 of my closest friends and, and it's true. Um, but it's, it's an undertaking to, to put the thing on. Um, and I'll actually, I'll video some of that. I'll do a, 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 I'll do a video for, you know, prep and everything and what it takes to 
put this thing on there at Balsam Lake Lodge. Um, but yeah, thanks for sticking around on the project. I know, you know, I'm, I'm new to all this. You know, I have no plans to become like, you know, the next uh, Dina Machines or anything. I mean, this is just kind of a, a video, uh, video project thread, I guess would be the way I'd put it. So very kind of off the cuff, very sporadic, not planned very much. And I'm not sinking a whole lot of money in, uh, into, you know, equipment and stuff to shoot it. I just got the phone, so. But uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the project so far. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay in the loop on it. There's going to be plenty more content centered around this car um, in the very near future. Um, particularly this winter, we'll put it up and cut the whole thing apart and fix the rust. And then, I don't know, I haven't decided if we're going to paint it yet or not. So, yeah, get it ready for Sandblast Rally and, uh, and Bristol Forest Rally to run as the double zero car there. Hopefully, as long as the page is okay with that. Uh, yeah, but been fun i'm kind of pretty proud of the progress i've made on this car in a month and a half two months or so especially for like my first kind of foray into amazon's in a completely new platform not that it's complex or anything. it's actually way easier than most of the later stuff but um big shout out to vp auto parts they've um i've sent quite a bit of money to them at this point um i don't know how they do it but they get stuff here like almost next like there have been a couple times i'll order stuff early on a monday morning it'll be here tuesday night um, they're down in Charleston, which is, you know, it's a ways, but it's it's not it's not super close. Um, but yeah, they're they're on it with shipping. Um, but yeah, they've got everything I needed for the project so far, and I'm gonna spend plenty more money with them. Um, but yeah, it's been real, it's been fun, and uh, we're signing off on the the kind of basic stage zero for now. And uh, next thing you hear out of me will be probably a, a mountain video. So. Thanks for sticking around. And like I said, uh, like and subscribe to see where we're going next. Appreciate you.